Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome. Um, I am Alexandrio Sup. I'm a professor at Freie Universiteit uh, in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Uh, and today, it is really my great uh, pleasure to introduce to you Maria Girone. And uh, she has a PhD in particle physics and also extensive knowledge in computing, especially for high energy physics uh, experiments. Uh, she worked in scientific computing since uh, 2002. Uh, and I would say that uh, her activity earned her at least a Wikipedia page. Uh, she has worked for many years on the development and deployment of uh, computing services and tools, uh, especially for the globally distributed uh, computing grid. Uh, many of us know about the worldwide uh, LHC uh, computing grid, the WLCG at CERN. Uh, and she's a founder of the WLCG Operations Coordination Team. Um, between 2014 and 2015, uh, she was the software and computing coordinator for the CMS experiment at the LHC, uh, having to do with a lot of big data before the term was uh, very popular, I think. Um, and I want to say that uh, the work she's doing right now is really big science meets uh, big tech. Uh, in her role at, as uh, Chief Technology Officer, Maria is uh, managing the overall technical uh, strategy of CERN Open Lab, uh, where they're planning towards uh, R&D in computing architectures, HPC and AI, so all the hot topics uh, in, in big tech today, uh, in collaboration with the LHC experiments. Um, uh, they are upgrading uh, all their programs for software, for computing, uh, big science really needs this. Uh, and uh, she's also trying to promote opportunities for collaboration with the industry. Uh, since July 2020, Maria coordinates for CERN the HPC collaborations with uh, SKA, so SCA, with Jeant uh, and Praise. Uh, all this is uh, both big science and big tech infrastructure uh, to tackle challenges related to the use of high performance computing for large, uh, large scale data intensive science. Uh, she will uh, give an awesome keynote, I'm sure, about the future computing needs uh, in high energy physics. And I'm really looking forward to this talk. So without further ado, Maria, please uh, go ahead. Thank you very much. And uh, I hope I can be heard uh, properly. Uh, I would like to uh, start to saying good morning uh, to everyone and good afternoon to those uh, like me who are uh, on this side of the world. Many, many thanks to the organizers for this opportunity and this invitation. I'm always proud to be uh, talking and sharing uh, um, uh, our uh, roadmap um, in computing and in particular to discuss uh, the computing challenges in high energy physics and how we are going to tackle them. Um, so um, many thanks again for this. Now, before going into the details of what we're doing, uh, I would like uh, just to spend uh, a few slides in uh, talking about uh, uh, CERN, for those of you who don't know it, is the largest uh, particle physics laboratory in the world and was founded after the Second World War as a science for peace. So its primary mission is uh, understanding the origin of the universe and uh, unveiling the secrets of the Big Bang. It also performs uh, research in the many related fields which are important as well, um, exploring the, the technologies, uh, um, new technologies for detectors, accelerators, of course, information technology, where I belong. And uh, here I would like to mention that we have introduced uh, a number of disruptive technologies, certainly in the worldwide the web. The largest uh, uh, distributed computing grid, the WCG. We are uh, innovators, or we were innovators in big data when we use the term more than we do today. Um, and uh, of course, uh, there are a number of activities at CERN with the beneficial spin offs. Uh, um, in particular, I would like to mention the advances in medical and material science uh, through imaging and sensing developments. But really what I like to say that makes uh, CERN a special place, and I'm very proud to be a part of this, is the fact that uh, um, a, as core mission to train young researchers, uniting people from different countries and different cultures, and that really 
is a, a very important added value for a place like uh, San. Now from the 12 founding member states, San today has a big community, is supported by 23 member states, five associates, six observers, and supports a big worldwide community of about 50,000 researchers uh, with a budget of about 1.5 billion uh, Swiss francs a year. It has got a unique set of uh, uh, particle accelerators. They are all very important. A uh, last ring of the chain, um, and also the best known of the accelerators is certainly the Large Hadron Collider. It accelerates particles in uh, opposite directions to close to the speed of light. And the beams are brought into collision in four points around the uh, LHC ring. And these collisions produce uh, massive particles uh, such as the famous uh, Higgs boson. And by measuring the properties of these particles, uh, scientists increase uh, certainly the, the, our understanding of matter. There are uh, four large detectors that act uh, as gigantic cameras, 12 researchers to analyze a myriad of particles produced by the event uh, collisions in the accelerators. And uh, you can see a little bit of uh, a, <laughs> Uh, and uh, just a picture of them. Um, uh, the biggest of these experiments, Atlas and uh, uh, CMS, are general purpose detectors uh, to investigate the largest range of physics possible. And having the two independently designed detectors is actually vital for cross confirmation of any new discoveries that uh, are made. And in fact, this has been the case for the Higgs boson discovery, for those of you who follow this in 2012. Uh, Alice and LHCB have uh, uh, specialized detectors for focusing on specific phenomena, uh, namely uh, the quark gluon plasma and the uh, um, matter antimatter asymmetry in the universe for LHCB. The uh, LHC produces actually enormous volumes of data, so we are uh, leaders in uh, big data, if you want. Um, we have about 150 million sensors that are read out when uh, we are operating uh, uh, the machines um, 40 million times a second. So this would be enormous amounts of data if it, it was all written out and would sum to something like petabytes per second. Um, we record as primary data the so-called raw data, and this contain uh, an indication of the position, the energy, uh, the time of the produced particles. And then we have uh, uh, reconstruction algorithms that uh, help us in understanding, actually, uh, um, uh, these data and the constructive data uh, is derived from the raw data and the measures, in fact, the physics quantities. Um, the uh, transition from uh, raw to uh, reconstructive data is performed on a very large distributed computing infrastructure. And it happens basically asynchronously uh, or as we say, offline. And this is represented schematically in these blue blocks that you see on the right-hand side of the slide. The data is processed through reconstruction algorithms. And in parallel, we simulate events which allow data to be compared to theoretical predictions during the analysis step. The simulation and the reconstruction applications are composed of roughly 50 billion lines of C++ and Python code, contributions by hundreds of scientists over the last uh, 20 years. So um, I'm saying this because uh, I want to uh, you know, stress that the software environment is complex and challenging uh, to optimize because of this huge size and the amount of legacy code. Filtering and data selection happen instead in quasi real time, as we say online. And this is represented schematically by the white box on top. And this happens to uh, two main steps. So in these two steps, decisions are taken 
within uh, microseconds to milliseconds from event collisions. So it's a very challenging environment. And basically, um, uh, data selection, data processing, and data analysis really drive the physics discovery um, at, uh, uh, you know, at CERN. The, uh, we have uh, developed a, um, and we, have, uh, we rely on a large computing infrastructure that is called the Worldwide LHC Computing Grid. It is uh, uh, composed uh, um, of uh, contributions from uh, about uh, 170 sites over more than 40 countries, so it's a worldwide endeavor. Today, we can count on about 1 million processor cores uh, and uh, about of, uh, one exabyte of storage um, on the grid, uh, counting from uh, the primary to the derived data. Uh, so we are uh, a, already, in a way, an exascale uh, science. And the volume of the data that is moved in WCG is uh, also important uh, and uh, is used to, ser to serve all of the uh, analysis activities uh, worldwide. And is uh, uh, shown on this top plot and it amounts to about 40 uh, gigabytes per second continuously. Uh, looking at the lower distribution, uh, you can see the number of uh, CPU cores, uh, uh, core hours, sorry. And in this uh, last year, WCG delivered about 6 billion core hours to process data. So um, I would like now to uh, actually, uh, you know, go into the next uh, stage of this presentation. And uh, I would like to introduce you to the um, major uh, project at CERN, which is going to start in 2027. It's called the Light Luminosity LHC. And this is a very important uh, uh, project uh, uh, for CERN, for physics, uh, uh, the accelerator, but it's also important uh, for uh, computing uh, as there are important challenges uh, uh, that come together with it. Um, so um, the LHC uh, has actually been designed from its start to follow a carefully set out program of upgrades over a long time, over 30 years. This is the typical duration of uh, a, an accelerator uh, at CERN uh, together with, uh, uh, you know, from uh, 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 the, the project uh, to its execution. Um, we are today in the so-called long shutdown too, when uh, the accelerator maintenance and the detector upgrades are performed. And uh, um, the distribution uh, that you see at the bottom right shows the expected and integrated luminosity. So you can see from this blue curve that we have collected uh, less uh, or about 10% of the data that uh, overall is expected by the uh, end of this program. So uh, over uh, the uh, next uh, data taking period, uh, which will be round three, LHCB and ALICE will be upgraded uh, to uh, collect uh, much more data. And it will be paving the way to the upgrades uh, of ATLAS and CMS, which will happen in round four with the start of the high luminosity uh, um, program. The um, high luminosity program represents approximately a 10 uh, uh, um, times increase in luminosity and event complexity as the number of simultaneous uh, collisions uh, uh, jump from about 40 collisions per crossing uh, to uh, uh, about 200. And you can see this into these uh, uh, plots that uh, are um, displayed uh, um, on this uh, uh, slide. Um, you can compare uh, a real data event from run two in CMS 
on the left uh, with uh, what we expect in terms of uh, uh, um, simulations from uh, uh, an Atlas event uh, in from RAM4. So you can see that the occupancy is going to be really uh, very important and the complexity of uh, events is really going up by factors. And uh, um, more collisions and the more complex data actually will uh, result in this challenge at exascale level that I was anticipating a moment ago. So the uh, upgrade uh, uh, program uh, certainly means for us new challenges, as I pointed out. The accelerator, uh, because we go to much higher, sorry, luminosity. Um, the upgraded detectors uh, with higher granularity for higher uh, occupancy. Uh, the experiments will also increase uh, all their acceptance rates by changing their filtering paradigms. So the, upgraded, uh, the planned upgrades uh, are there in order to increase the scientific reach and help physicists to observe rare processes and study them with greater precision. So in a way, we like to explain that it's going to like moving from looking for a needle in an haystack to producing many more needles. And this will impose uh, challenges that you will see in a second also for computing and storage. So you see here uh, the um, uh, computing resource estimates uh, on the uh, right hand side of the slide based on the expectations of running conditions at the high luminosity LHC up to the end of round four. And these predictions are coming from uh, two event selection scenarios from CMS and are represented by these blue lines. For processing is the upper plot, for storage is the lower plot. And uh, um, you see also a 10 to 20% increase uh, uh, of expected uh, uh, annually um, in resources as will be coming from technology improvements. And this is represented by this gray band. The uh, red ellipses indicate basically the size of the resource gap that today is estimated uh, roughly of, uh, of a factor six to 10 for what concerns processing and a factor three to five of what concerns storage. And Atlas has similar estimates. Um, this resource gap is uh, certainly motivating factors, uh, you know, up to 10 are uh, tough to get um, an ambitious R&D program. Um, to adapt the code to hardware accelerators and HPC to code modernization, including uh, exploring unified programming models to reduce the uh, storage footprint and to introduce more efficient uh, techniques like AI and ML. Um, all these uh, um, as also to uh, measure itself uh, with uh, our uh, uh, infrastructure. So today, high energy physics is still heavily relying on x86 general purpose CPUs. Um, at the same time, we understand and we know that there has been a large industry investment in optimized uh, heterogeneous uh, uh, hardware resources, like those that are uh, uh, used in uh, supercomputer centers. And this table on the right shows examples of uh, CPUs and accelerators in use or plan to be used in the leading supercomputer sites. So uh, certainly the advent of heterogeneous hardware hasn't gone unnoticed and has shaken um, the computing landscape even for high energy physics. And I would say that today all experiments are exploring GPUs for accelerated event reconstruction and simulation. We have active programs deploying artificial intelligence and ML techniques in all the processing steps from data acquisition to analysis. You will see this in a moment. And these definitely benefit from accelerators like GPUs and specialized ASICs. We are also um, 
uh, investigating uh, the use of FPGAs, uh, mostly in uh, low latency applications like data acquisition and filtering. So, uh, and in, uh, just to uh, mention the, uh, to increase the adoption of diversity in hardware, several experiments uh, frameworks are also, have also been imported to power and to ARM. So uh, I'm going to concentrate now into uh, really uh, covering the challenges and the activities for what concerns the integration of high performance computing in our community. And uh, uh, I'm going to start from this very simple uh, diagram, uh, which to me uh, summarizes well the fact that high performance computing really falls uh, for us at the intersection of several uh, uh, important R&D areas. So it's important to work here. It is potentially a valuable resource to help us to close the resource gap that is ahead of us for the high luminosity LHC. And by the way, uh, uh, HPC supercomputers will grow by uh, a factor 10 uh, on the time scale of the high luminosity LHC. Certainly, supercomputers rely on intelligent hardware and are importantly uh, sources of expertise to facilitate the evolution of uh, applications from communities like our, that is really heavily investing, I would say, on software development, including uh, um, unified programming models. Uh, high performance computing can also play an important role in the efficient adoptions of uh, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques. So the engagement uh, with uh, uh, high performance, um, high performance commu com computing community can be really a catalyst for progress in all these areas. It may play a critical role on the timescales that are ahead of us. So we have launched this uh, uh, Toro R&D program, which is being executed. And I have chosen a few examples uh, to showcase um, on uh, uh, ongoing collaboration in particular with this community. But before uh, doing uh, this, uh, uh, actually uh, the first step uh, towards a coherent approach has certainly been to define uh, the common challenges to HPC integration. So we have uh, uh, gathered, uh, studied and gathered them in a published document that is referenced. And this uh, process has helped us to identify seven key areas where development is needed, where we are concentrating. We are investing in software development for heterogeneous architectures. We are learning how our workflows can be benchmarked and accounted for on HPC resources, um, how to efficiently process and access enormous volumes of data while dealing uh, with the stricter uh, cyber securities uh, and still in our case with the global user community. And additionally, we're also studying how to package our environment, how to schedule resources, has provisioned allocations rather than dedicated resources, how to accommodate wide and local area and network limitations. So I'm going to give a few examples of the work that we are doing in particular within the team uh, that I'm working together with. But I wanted really to stress that uh, this is not uh, the overall picture, is giving some uh, uh, good examples of where we are working, but it's not an exhaustive list. And uh, I could not do, do, be doing this in, uh, in, uh, you know, in 45 minutes. So um, where to start? Uh, well, I will start with the work on uh, uh, integrating uh, heterogeneous hardware. One of the uh, representative uh, activities that I would like to share has, has certainly been uh, uh, for us uh, uh, with the, the deepest projects. So we've been working uh, with them uh, for optimizing the app uh, high energy physics applications towards exascale. Um, and uh, 
Gavin are um, certainly profiting of this collaboration with the EU funded deepest uh, project that is, uh, has been working uh, just recently wrapped up on an energy efficient architecture on the path to exascale that uh, fits HPC as, as well as uh, HPDA workflow, uh, workloads. The modular supercomputer prototype that is shown here schematically on the top has allowed the exploration of hardware and uh, system architectures that are uh, optimized for uh, different use cases, but also this one uh, including, uh, is including uh, high energy physics. And uh, I'm showing also uh, the network uh, uh, schematic that has been adopted. So uh, with this, uh, within uh, this collaboration, we have been uh, um, capable of uh, uh, making some uh, representative e examples of how um, uh, re-engineering uh, um, reconstruction code, in particular for the local reconstruction of two of the CMS subdetectors, the electromagnetic and the, the hadronic calorimeter, has been um, using uh, CUDA and uh, offloading work to GPUs. You can see here the gains. Uh, we have achieved about factor three and the factor eight, uh, respectively, in these two subdetectors, uh, comparing, the, comparing uh, uh, the performance on uh, NVIDIA V100 uh, with respect to a, a dual uh, socket uh, CPU. And this you can see uh, into the uh, plots on the right. And this work uh, is now integrated with the uh, CMS uh, framework and will be used in the um, reconstruction at the um, filtering farm already in rank three. So it's been a very valuable work. At the same time, I also wanted to uh, mention the fact that uh, high energy physics is also looking at uh, enabling the utilization of heterogeneous architectures for simulation. It is very important because simulation is a very large consumer of computing. And we have been concentrating uh, together with uh, many other teams in, uh, in, uh, in the community on uh, uh, the Monte Carlo uh, generation step. Um, we have been launching a collaboration with the Norwegian University of Science and Technology uh, on performance studies of this uh, uh, Monte Carlo generation code that is implemented using CUDA and we are giving uh, input uh, on, uh, on the performance in particular. And uh, uh, the, the teams uh, in particular in uh, Chernobyl Lab are also investigating uh, unified programming models, uh, been uh, concentrating uh, on uh, understanding how tools like uh, Inter One API can be uh, included into the uh, ecosystem of high energy physics to create a all code that can be uh, supported on multiple architectures. Um, once we have uh, engineered uh, the applications, so with examples like the one that I just saw, we still have the challenge of bringing the data to and from supercomputers. Um, WCG is developing a data lake model that conceptually separates processing and storage functions as shown in the schematics here. The system relies heavily on the network and the intermediate caches to deliver the data. And the plot on the upper right shows the simulation of the data moving between caching layers as a function of time. And you can see that the bulk of the data eventually will be served from uh, local side caches. So this architecture should be ideal for integrating uh, HPC facilities but it also needs to be uh, operated at the scale which is compensated with them. And this is a challenge. Now the lower uh, diagram I want also to comment is showing the interplay of the different components from uh, the data management tools to the processing resources, which as you can see, include, uh, will include uh, grid sites, but also HPC and clouds to a content delivery network. And we are executing a series of uh, data challenges in order to demonstrate the visibility of the data lake model on the path to exascale. 
So the combined volume of the data is uh, in uh, for EPVLHC is about uh, one exabyte. Uh, I said this already, and almost all of it is in root files. Uh, root uh, is uh, the um, app analysis framework uh, and defines actually for us the columnar data format. So it's very important and uh, key component. Uh, development work is ongoing to maximize IO to reach the HPC scale and support uh, um, the heterogeneous uh, um, hardware environment. So the team is concentrating on supporting heterogeneous architectures, including declarative programming, transparent access to accelerators, supportability libraries, again, an effort in this direction, just-in-time compilation in C++ and improving the scaling. Now, um, processing uh, data-intensive uh, workflows in uh, high-performance computing um, actually is involving moving uh, a large number of these uh, root files from storage locations to processing resources. And the data flow is shown in a schematic view on this right hand side of the slide, if you can see that. Uh, it is uh, um, a complicated end-to-end -end data challenge that is going to involve many components. And the data files are moved over the wide area network. Um, I would also like to mention that TAP is, uh, by the way, modernizing the uh, network tools to use multiple 100 gigabit per second links. And once the data has arrived, uh, um, uh, it is typically um, either locally staged or cached. And uh, uh, then gets delivered to uh, processing uh, uh, nodes. And uh, the performance of the local uh, um, cache and the data delivery infrastructure, importantly, needs to scale with the size of the resource allocation. So in the case of the HPC Center and the performance of the application. So we are developing an IO benchmarking uh, framework um, in collaboration with the Summer of HPC and the CSCS Center. And in fact, this plot is also showing on the lower right an example of uh, um, one of the testing programs um, using uh, a representative experiment data reformatting application that is often used in high energy physics. And this is IO bound. For this example, um, uh, we are uh, uh, really uh, showing that uh, the data uh, that is being accessed from the local storage uh, shows uh, good linearity um, and scales uh, with the uh, increasing number of nodes. And we are uh, um, also uh, extending uh, uh, in a different number of uh, uh, tests, which will include the data federation and that catches. Um, and our end goal is going to be the ability of uh, um, uh, processing uh, uh, and demonstrate that we can process about 10 petabytes per day, not necessarily in individual facilities, but this is the scale that will be necessary at the uh, time scale of the high luminosity LHC. So another key activity is benchmarking. Uh, is a very active area and is uh, in a certainly necessary in order to answer the question on uh, how communities can make an effective use of HPC resources. And in particular for now, for us also, how we will be accounting for them. So uh, all communities have different uh, uh, tools in order to um, assess this. And I have been given here an example, which is coming from the unified European application benchmarking suite that is used by Praise that contains different workloads. CERN is uh, also been uh, uh, um, uh, developing a benchmarking suite, and this is lightweight, standalone, container-based, can easily be extended to other sciences and contains a representative workflows from the experiments, in particular the LHC experiments. 
And you can see the results here in terms of uh, the dashboard that is actually used. Um, the goal uh, is to have an objective and comparable uh, set of benchmarks that can be run on multiple uh, architectures. And uh, um, uh, there is also an automated collection and aggregation mechanism so that various projections can be offered depending on whether um, you know, is the researchers using the benchmarking suite or uh, site operators and procurement teams. And the benchmark uh, suite has been also successfully run a scale on um, different HPC sites. So it's a very powerful tool that we are sharing uh, also with the uh, other uh, data intensive sciences. Now, the last part of my talk is going to uh, uh, cover uh, the effort uh, that we are doing in particular in the enabling of uh, new techniques like AI and machine learning, definitely building on uh, the convergence that exists between HPC and AI. And uh, um, I'm uh, summarizing, as I cannot cover all the ongoing activities, which are really many in this slide, uh, where we are in terms of uh, um, global overview. On the uh, left-hand side, you can see here the uh, status of activities, which have been already, uh, let's say, developed and uh, the uh, CERN uh, community can uh, um, basically share as proven uh, capability. And on the uh, uh, right hand side, you can see the development uh, um, and uh, what is ongoing uh, right now in terms of uh, more pure R&D. So developed programs include fast machine learning from the data selection step that are deployed on FPGAs. We have also developed automatic, uh, automated techniques for uh, monitoring uh, detector data for um, uh, accelerator machine preventive maintenance with industrial control systems. Uh, ML is also being successfully adopted for operational intelligence on the distributed grid. Uh, giving uh, um, less pressure on uh, uh, teams uh, uh, in terms of uh, operation, uh, uh, operational steps. Um, and in terms of what is uh, uh, ongoing uh, for R&D, uh, we certainly believe that uh, uh, we have uh, um, the use of uh, machine learning as a great potential in improving uh, both simulation reconstruction uh, algorithms these are important algorithms as they are uh, top consumers of our computing resources. There are also developments in machine learning for robotics and uh, more recently uh, the exploration of algorithms for pattern recognition and classification using uh, quantum uh, machine learning. Now to realize really the potential of uh, AI, um, we are also working uh, together with uh, a new project. It is a center of excellence race. Um, so research in AI and uh, simulation based engineering uh, at Texas scale. This is a project that is supported by the European Commission. And uh, the ultimate goal of RAISE um, will be uh, to um, enable researchers from different sciences and industry to develop novel, scalable AI technologies towards exascale. Um, and we uh, are one of the uh, representative use cases from the communities. Uh, so um, for race, what will be very important uh, and is very important is the tight cable ca coupling that uh, is being established between the software infrastructure, the hardware infrastructure, uh, and the compute and the data-driven use cases, and transversely with the AI methods and the HPC um, methods, which will be transversal to the use cases. Um, so um, the goal is really to develop this unique uh, AI framework that can be used uh, at uh, X scale. 
and Sen is leading one of the work packages. Of course, as we are in uh, um, leaders in big data, we are uh, um, uh, leading the data-driven use cases together with other sciences. And I hope that uh, I will be able to share uh, um, in you know the development of this. Uh, um, a project uh, uh, in the next uh, uh, few years, and I hope that we will be really making uh, good opportunities and good use of uh, this uh, um, uh, center of excellence. Now, uh, I would also like to cover, actually, as one of my last slides, and apologies for this problem that we had, and this is about, uh, uh, you know, the um, overall computing challenges that we have ahead of us, which we believe that we actually share with other communities, and in particular with radio astronomy, uh, SKA uh, is uh, having uh, uh, very similar uh, challenges in computing storage with respect to uh, um, with the team, similar time scales as those in uh, um, for the high luminosity LHC. So in summer 2020, we launched a collaboration among CERN SKA Observatory, Giant and Trace, with the aim of tackling uh, uh, to a concrete set of demonstrators some of these uh, challenges towards HPC integration together. The consortium is ideally for, uh, formed as, uh, and it also comes at a very good time it brings together two large um, uh, science communities uh, which have a burning uh, um, a physics need and they have also in-depth knowledge of applications together with uh, praise that is uh, uh, you know an expert uh, uh, in uh, system adaptation and uh, software environments and giant that provides the infrastructure to connect the system end to end and this collaboration is built on four pillars uh, which are, by the way, I uh, already covered. So the building of a center of expertise to support heterogeneous hardware, very important for us. Benchmarking demonstrator for accounting and understanding how uh, our workloads behave with heterogeneous architecture, data access um, demonstrator and uh, authentication and authorization that will help us in exposing HPC to large communities. So it's really an exascale project for an exascale problem. And we are uh, um, working together in this HPC collaboration. And uh, this is really a key for our community, in particular sharing uh, with another big data intensive science. Now, uh, I also, this is really my very last slide. And um, as uh, the work on, uh, integration in high performance computing is very important for our community. I would also like to leave you with a feeling on how important this is in terms of a load of work that the experiments have been taking on board. And here are some uh, um, you know, key elements that are coming from uh, the integration of HPC resources by Atlas and CMS. You can see here that, uh, um, for instance, Atlas has been uh, delivering uh, about 10% of the uh, normalized world clock usage via HPC. Um, there are uh, contributions that are important uh, and are coming from a number of sites, uh, many of which are uh, collocated with uh, uh, traditional um, WCG uh, site resources. And this is, for instance, the case uh, uh, of Mare Nostrum um, that has been delivering for, At for Atlas 60% uh, uh, of the resources. Uh, um, um, and uh, uh, I would also like to uh, uh, stress uh, that the upper plot uh, um, is coming from the CMS experiment and is showing uh, how HPC resources can be um, made uh, available um, to uh, dedicated uh, um, interface layers at cloud by in, uh, in particular, and up to 100,000 cores have been used at uh, times and integrated into the uh, CMS ecosystem. So uh, my conclusions, uh, App is certainly facing an unprecedented computing challenge 
from the exabytes of data that are expected uh, from the high luminosity LHC. Um, we uh, have operated uh, the uh, worldwide LHC computing grid for more than a decade. And we are uh, uh, experts in this uh, area, but actually uh, the expected needs uh, uh, are uh, driving us also to look for uh, additional resources. And opportunities with the high performance computing sites may play an important role in the future, in particular to exploit uh, uh, extra scale capabilities for uh, data intensive science. This is the reason why we have been creating this collaboration and we are conducting, uh, I hope I demonstrated this to you, a number of, our, uh, of uh, um, r and in order to improve our capability uh, uh, to continue the exploration of heterogeneous architectures, um, building on the expertise that we have on AI and machine learning and doing much more than uh, analysis and uh, the increasing the scale of uh, processing and data uh, access solutions. Um, now, uh, so um, to conclude, um, our uh, um, collaboration is uh, um, certainly uh, in important and uh, we are uh, con continuing to work in uh, establishing enablers um, for uh, our uh, um, data uh, and computer challenges ahead of us with the participation that we certainly welcome from broader communities and input. And um, on this note, I would like to conclude my uh, talk and apologies because I'm sure that now I have taken the entire hour given the incident that we had.